Hello and welcome to the last goals I view of this season. We will do a few end of season things, of course. Um, as you can see, it's been a tough season on all of us. Um, <laughs> thank you for your company all year. Thanks to all the people who watch us and thank you to Galaxy TQ for sponsoring us. Right. Uh, where, where do you want to start, everyone? Any any ideas this week? Yes, no introductions this week. No introductions. Oh, no. yeah. Tom's here. Chris is here, Hello. Tom's here. Right. Yeah. Um, oh. So basically... Should we start with the people that went to Altrincham? Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's go back to Altrincham. Tom went. Tom had a day out on the I bus. Did. A rare oh. day out, mate. I don't leave the West Country very often, do I? <laughs> Up north, I had to fetch my passport out of the uh, cupboard. <laughs> I got there in time. I got there with the uh, lovely travel club people. Picked us up nice and not too early, just after eight o'clock ish. In decent spirits, considering I thought everybody would be moping and be down, but um, there was plenty of banter flying around. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. It took us a while to get there. We didn't get there till two, Tom, did we? We were bloody thirsty then, weren't we? I was there. I was there Friday night, mate. Yeah, I know, but you saw me at the bar, didn't we? Me and Rich running no, I thought, to the bar. I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought you made good time. You got there about quarter yeah. to two-ish. Yeah, there was a um, question about the away. So it's such a good thing the the travel club, honestly. Yeah. Like, it's such a big thing, and the club needs to push it more, obviously. But, um, but they yeah. don't push it. They don't push it at all, which is no, so frustrating. It's just a disgrace, really. Was Tom yeah. still sober when you got there, Tom? He, he was. Uh, he was. Uh, yeah, was... wobbling a little bit, weren't you, mate? Yeah, the the beer's flowing. Um, yeah, en- enough enough to enjoy eighty nine ish minutes of that game. I thought you were going to say eighty nine pints. <laughs> I wish it was eight nine pints afterwards. My goodness. Um, yeah, yeah, we had a bit of socials before, and then mm. first, no, it's nice. First, it's nice. Not a lot happened first half, did it? It was kind of, it was like they were in the season. They were happy to soak up any pressure. We tried but not a lot happened did it we had one it, it was very chance. was it Nublay who had the header yeah it was it was a poor half Nublay's header that was not about much. it and then they scored that was about it yeah they um caught us didn't they and right on half time silly mistake was it an error I was just coming back from the loo actually I, I was trying know, to, we I was lost trying the to ball and suddenly they were clear weren't they all they had to do was pass it and um yeah I don't think Hal said any, anything he could do with that um, yeah, we were just, yeah. it was just a lethargic sort of end of typical end of season game at Ultrigham, to be honest. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and we we came out second half all guns blazing, really. And there was a lot more God. push, we were pushed up a lot more second half. So the team got yeah. up the pitch, and um, Nublay was coming back too far first half. Yeah. The second half, he was actually getting the ball in the penalty area, holding it up, and people were making bits around that. And, uh, I get a few crosses in. Had a lot of corners, didn't we, mate? And... Mm-hmm. A lot of wasteful yeah. corners, but we finally got one to stick. Um, Ace of Hall. It didn't look that. Um, it was a nice great finish. finish. It was quite. It was almost like slow motion. He, he didn't really yeah, get a lot of power cool. into it, but it ended up in the top corner. And it was just intelligent. There was, there was only one place he could put it, and he um, toe poked it. He's a clever player like that. Ace. So I don't think you give him enough. We give him enough praise. Oh, he reminds me like. Uh, lower the standard of like Lampard, how we would come in and like yeah. there and always just read the game and get so many goals like that. He's so talented. It's the understanding of where to be and yeah. where, where he needs to put the ball because he could have easily just toe poked it straight at the goalkeeper and nothing would have happened. So. And then that his his rocket into the <laughs> the second goal was incredible. Like right, at that what point, is, at that what point, a strike! Oh my god! So at that point, I don't know about you, Chris, but I was at the radio one. I hate listening on the radio. I oh, no, I can't do it. it. I just can't I do usually it. can't, but I, I was just <laughs> no. sat beside on live scores. I might as well listen to it at this point. And I generally, I was sat around here. And I ran into that. When that goal went in, I went mental, ran into that cupboard, ran out of my room because my dad's downstairs listening to it as well, <laughs> celebrating. Honestly, it was just like... It was you know, a beautiful... Peaked. It was a beautiful strike. It really oh, was. The crowd went well, didn't they? Because it was, what, oh. five yards out. Beauty. Absolute beauty. It's put it in, but, and then we thought, oh, okay, it's on. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Yeah, it's on. The point at that time, honestly, like I, 
I was walking up and down. I can't sit still. It's horrendous. You yeah. see scores. There was that one point. Maiden and Ed were losing. We were winning. Yeah. It's always and worse you... when you're not there as well. Somehow when yeah. you're there, you're in control. You're not yeah, in any exactly. way. Yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. It's horrible. It's not... You wait well, for the radio, you board. can't see. And especially when the radio, what's happening. Can you always shout feel and scream every time like the ball gets slightly near the goal line. Yeah, so... so you don't ever know what's yeah. going on. And then yeah. um, it's kind of... Bittersweet. Yeah, it, I just couldn't believe it. You, you it was so... It was... It was such a silly tackle to make from eight, so it really wasn't going anywhere. Kevin, you? He yeah, you were just like, don't. For it. And yeah, the referee. Why had were no we choice so it. pushed up though? Why were we not at eleven men behind the ball? Why didn't make it tackle? Why was we he kind in that of, situation? It, uh, Gary said, "Did Gary say something about he was trying to get? He was thinking about the goal difference, so he wanted to get mm. get that third and kind of put the game out of sight." But, but in that situation, we did all we had to do. I mean, the goal difference is. Okay, granted, it's it's worse for us. It's what's got us relegated. At the end the of the main day, thing was winning the game. Though, we just had to win that game. If we had won that game, game, the momentum and confidence behind us, the yeah. fear in Maidenhead yeah, sure. when it's like a game. Wrexham's on the league, so if the theory is correct, they'd be worse because they're junk or whatever. Um, even though I think a nervous team would have been easier to play. Maybe, I don't know. But mm. And then he just gone from a bit of hope at that play more together on the last day of the season, everyone who bought tickets would have definitely gone. And well, one, one thing we knew is we can beat Wrexham, don't they? Yeah. But as soon as that goal went in, it just took it out of our hands completely. Yeah. It's just so yeah. demoralising. There's a, but there's a difference, isn't there, between having to win the game and having to win yeah. the game by a significant margin, which I think I guess is the difference, isn't it? You know, winning the game, you know, we beat them one that played more last year, didn't we? So we can we could grind Wrexham and yeah. beat them two one, can we? Anything can happen on game. If we like chase that. the game and try and thrash them, mm. they'll take us apart, won't we? That's the trouble. Yeah. So, Gary Gary was pretty much gave up but, after the game, and the one, as you'd imagine, you know, expect. But, but Ultragon didn't even look like they were going to score. No, after we went 2 and up, it was our, we'd, all we had to do was just control the play for the last 20, 25 minutes, win the game, and then get into the final game. And, you know, all we'd have to maybe do is win. You know, had we beaten Ultragon, then maybe a win would have been enough now. But, yeah, silly tackle and, you, you know. Maybe 50 points, maybe in 51. No, yeah. we're clowning around. We haven't got relegated the last few games. We get relegated. The we weekend. said we, we got relegated, and we're clowning it, yeah. around the whole yeah. season. And we get saying, "Oh, you need a couple mm. wins." And you no, you always have to get to that magic point. And that, yeah. but it just sucked the energy out of everyone. Oh, fans, shots! Right? Right, it just killed us. We had, and then we got a free. We got that free kick right at the end with Bagavin. You know, central, just get it in, and it goes wide, and yeah, that just that. Oh, I didn't that final was that okay. final. I was mute for like hours and I'm never speechless. I, but I there mute. was, we didn't know how to kind of react at full time. Mm-hmm. It was just was kind of, it, you know, you, I mean, they, they were clapping us. We were clapping them, but it was more, you could see like both, you know, the fans and the players, they knew it was done. It's over. We all sort of it's stood just... motionless, didn't we, Tom? It was a really strange couple of yeah. minutes, wasn't it? You we just wanted to kind of, nobody knew what to do, did they? You just wanted to disappear, just kind yeah. of hide away, disappear. And, you know, it's, it was heartbreaking because I've got. I have to say, I again, having not been there, I thought Johnson after the game was pretty. Poor. I thought he, the tone of his interview was pretty poor mm. because it, because in those moments, fully accepting that we you know, I think most of us know probably know where that's left us. But actually, that can't be the tone you give out publicly. That cannot be the public mm. message. It had to be. Yeah, that's not helpful. That's not what we needed. But we've got one more game. You never know. We, we we'll come into work. We'll work hard this week. We'll prepare as we would normally. We'll apply ourselves. We will do everything we can to do what we have to do next week. He's, but then he's come the out. He's come out. Have, but that's not what he said, is it? But then he's, he's actually quite say, honest for a change, though, yeah. wasn't he? He's been bluffing all season. But it's not over. But then, but then he's the come out. It's today. not over. It's he, not. He's come out today in his in his pre-match interview for this yeah. weekend and said, you know, exactly that. You know, we've got to hope that. You know, yeah. weird things happen in football. It's not over. It's yeah, kind of mixed I, messaging. Absolutely. Let's be honest. I mean, the chances of it happening, I, I don't do betting, but the odds can't be that good, can they? But I mean, but I, the same chance as Tom winning the Euro Millions, I guess, and buying the club next week. So. Yeah, absolutely. But again, but who would have thought Bristol Rovers would have would have won seven 0 on the last ten of the season to get promoted last year? You just, with football, yeah. uh, you just don't know. You, I mean, yeah. it's highly unlikely, but you just don't know. So, and whilst there's a chance, you've got to hold on to that. If and only I we were as playing, a manager, I, he gave up. He's given up. Yeah. If only we were playing Scumthorpe and not Wrexham, then maybe I'd have a bit more hope. Um, Pretty much anybody I, but the top two, we'd have hope. But Scumthorpe yeah. under 12s, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. 
I don't know. It's talking United, isn't it? I mean, we've had Bryn, we've had Stevenage, where the ground's not been up to scratch. I mean, mm. who knows? If, if again, I keep saying, <laughs> if there's one, if there's one football team that can pull out the impossible, it would be Talking United Football Club. But mm. yeah, the the post match interview, uh, you just got the feeling that he might not be around next year. But then, of course, we'll come on to that in part two. Yeah, we'll come on to that in part two later yeah. on. But yeah, it was just ejection, and I could have. I could have cried. It was just we so got straight sad. on the bus, and I saw Tom walking past with his mates, kicking something on the floor like in anger. Bless him. <laughs> Gary Johnson's interview. Do you want to talk about that now or the second part? Actually, we we'll talk about it now a bit, maybe. Oh, you brought it up. Yeah. What do we think? I've I've actually bought. I nearly bought up my lunch watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, now you get, oh, now yeah. you get annoyed by his interviews. I've been bloody yeah. annoyed by all fucking season, mate. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, 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 are we talking about the one during the week, yeah. the press yeah. call one? It's yeah. just strange, isn't it? I mean, the, the other thing about it is it almost feels like a bit of a conspiracy theory because everyone, and again, as I said before here, I thought the statement from the owner on Monday was um, a bit odd, but, yeah. e- but equally trying to be as level about it as possible, whatever statement they put out, and they had to put something out, whatever statement they put out, he was going to get battered for. So, but that, but they yeah. bought that on themselves by the way that they behaved over the, or not behaved yeah. over the last couple of years. But um, this but idea of, of all being... waffled on, can you? And then at the end, yeah. we're, going to be, we're going to be part-time. I'd rather he keep it short and say full-time. And that was good news, what, at least. From what I thought yeah. was There's interesting. There's a lot of rubbish in... apart from it. Yeah. I said to you tonight, Dom, the thing that struck me straight away was it was written by a businessman. Yeah. wasn't it it wasn't written by it wasn't yeah. written by you know the chairman of a football club it was written by a businessman um he was saying all the right things and you know the, the use of the word excited for next season was an yeah. extremely odd choice of words to use i would suggest at this awesome. point we all will become august because the start of a new season in whatever league you're in we'll all be excited i have no doubt but um it was seemed an odd thing to say to it me. It was written by a person who never goes to watch Talking United play yeah, and watches watches from afar and gets told the results. You know, occasionally somebody's dis- distracted from the passion and the the reality of of a running a football club, supporting a football club, being involved in a football club, isn't it? That's it. Mm. There was no feeling really in it, was there at all? It yeah. Was, praise the supporters of Wrexham and um, some willingness. Yeah. But, yeah. But Congratulations. How many pieces Wrexham have gone up? Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Mm. Let's not okay, forget that. Let's, let's, not for, let's not forget that you know they were throwing coins at our lot earlier in the season. Or the last two games we played them at the race course. But yeah, you know, well done, Wrexham. It's a great achievement bringing yeah. you know League One players down. But... I think we expect very little from this guy. That he, he very rarely throws us more than a few paragraphs. Usually, he mentions the stadium. So thankfully, he didn't throw <laughs> that. Yeah. I think my overall <laughs> reaction when I saw the statement was, "My goodness, he actually has a spine. He's actually." Um, posted something out uh it, it just again it just felt like it wasn't written from the heart it was just you know we need to do something put it out where you know no no hint of like we're sorry for what's happened thank you for your loyal support we we know that we deserve better than this and we'll do whatever we can to do it um we'll see we'll yeah, wait and see i suppose time, though, if that is true yeah that but that true. that was that was I the most important thing we need that clarity that. Because yeah. if we went part time, we were going to be finished. He did as... say, to, "Look, I am not going to sit and defend that man for one moment at all." But I am now. But he said he did say it. We did get a statement. Okay, we all know where this is most probably going to end. We were worried about it. It's a disgrace what's happened. But let's just we're staying full time next season. That, that yeah, we can only it, take it a little bit. I know it's it. unrealistic there, and it's going to be very tough, especially if you're able to get it out together next season on any other teams. But. And we don't, more importantly. But football club, let's just take away all the stuff and just talk about football solely. Football is all about momentum within your football club. If we can get it back and if we can win the league straight away next season again or get promoted, sign a young or sign what a good set of players it will develop like we did last time. It's very difficult. I don't see it happening again because a lot of that was business city youngsters. Hit the Nash, get promoted, which would be a good achievement again. Or it shouldn't be, but it will be. It would um, be the minimum expectation. It's Sam. the minimum expectation. You're right. Yeah, hit, and hit, hit the national league. Just... Hit the national league with momentum, and all of a sudden you're building the right way again. So from a sole football point, now it's like right, we've got to get do whatever's happening. But it's all about momentum. Football, and we lost all that. For me, we have to remove everything that's to do with Ashton Gate in this football club because fans won't get over it. We know, we all know this, all that. 
But I still thought last season was infected because Johnson, for obvious, and I don't blame him, probably wasn't over it. The football club never felt over it. Um, and then the momentum went from being this really good momentum in our football club to the spender. And then there's so many bad transfers, bad decisions, bad everything on and off the field. Is when <laughs> we're just completely slid down that. And we're sliding, we're sliding, sliding. That's what it's about now. It's all about getting that momentum back and just building the excitement within the club and going forwards. But yeah, I mean, short term, we can do better next season. I just want to see better structure and planning. Yeah, I want to see the planning. I just but, don't feel like we're we're built for any success no. at all. We will get a little bit, we'll get a season, we'll do all right here or there. But will we end up back struggling in the National League if we do go out? You know, I, I just... I don't know if these guys are canny enough exactly, or maybe yeah. they just don't care enough to, to build. We should never go back into the National League and struggle. It should never be, the bare minimum in the National League should be 14th and upwards. Like, we should never, ever be struggling. We should never be like... But do, we, do they surround themselves with enough canny football people? Exactly. Who can and they don't, well, they don't have any sport. canny football people, full stop. They've got Gary they Johnson, up. haven't they? And that's... that's it. You know, that could have been Forget. for a little while, but they haven't had enough advice elsewhere. I don't think there's not enough people saying, well, oh, you could do this, you could do that. I just don't but think they're taking on enough, enough football yep. knowledge to build this project, you know, because... Uh, yeah, but it's OK, though, because they all get on really well. Um, Gary yeah. and George Edwards have got a great working relationship. It just feels like yeah. quite a frankly, big, big cosy agreement. Yeah, and I hate yeah, that. Quite frankly, when my club's about to get relegated, I couldn't give a monkey's backside whether you get on with each other very well mm. or not. Well, you're, what your job is to do is to produce a a positive, as much as anything, it's about match day experience, isn't it? You know, yeah. something that you yeah. look at is does how what's the match day experience like? What is the entertain- who are coming entertainment to our industry? Mm. As, um, as Johnson I used to say, but I was still quoting the man himself, and it's yeah, not good this season. I, I don't go to be entertained or go to watch my team I win. I agree, you know, yeah. You think, Link, you think Lincoln under Keith Alexander, their fans went to be entertained? No, they went to watch them win. It was horrific yeah. to watch, yeah. but they won. And it's about, well, you go to see your team win, don't you? Let's be honest. I don't care if it's a scrappy Because they've something. been in, in agreement, hasn't translated yeah, to success, mm-hmm. has it? I'd rather have them fall out occasionally because they they have different ideas, they bring different things mm. to the table. Then you get success because mm. different things coming along, and you just can, yeah. you can just not to, just not to the level of Yeovil Town. Yeah, that's going too <laughs> well, far. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it. You, you don't want them like, arguing yeah, online. That's mad, that's but, uh, but it just seems but, you to know, be, there's a lot of nodding going on this season, mm. and, and, and not an acceptance mm. of failure, but there just hasn't I, been any acrimony it, of like you know who's taking responsibility, who's going to. You know, make mm-hmm. this right. I just don't see it. It's trouble. I know we went to Go on, Chris, go on. No, no you go, crossed, man. It, it crossed my mind today that it, that it kind of, a couple of things made sense today, reading that, listening to that today. A lot of things, because it kind of, because you think, well, if you look at it logically, the time I think when he should have gone was after Yeovil away, because that was, yeah. we'd lost to a terrible side. We were an awful run. We didn't know where the next win was coming from. That you was the time. Where, the fans, they yeah, them. absolutely. After that game, you know, yeah. those you want to stay and applaud and all of that st- and all of that rubbish. And that was, that felt like the time when the cycle had come to an end and there was time for a new manager to come in, assess the squad, bringing people he wanted to bring in. And that was the time. So looking back on that now from that statement today, it does. You does look. It makes you look at it and think. Well, actually, it doesn't sound like it was ever on the table because yeah. there's been no suggestion at any point where mm. anybody has said to him, "Look, if this doesn't get any better, your head's on the block here." Because yeah. it all just feels a bit nice, doesn't it? Oh, don't worry. Ah, oh, yeah, Gary. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you carry on. Yeah, you'll be all right. Because I mean, and do and again, and this leads to the question. The the you know the 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 question we put on. Um, Twitter and Facebook earlier around, you know, what the structure should be for next season. I don't, I'm not saying necessarily personally that I, I don't know that Johnson staying would be the worst thing in the world because I, I'd have to have the, the hindsight of who do we bring in instead? Um, because th- there may not be a better thing, option. Yeah, why not? Be? I, I, my, own, my own personal view is I think now is the time course, for a change. I, agree, because but, yeah, I but think it might, might equally, not be a, you know, who knows? But yeah. that's life, is it? You can't look at the into a bad Time will tell, won't they? It goes well, yeah. it goes well. Yeah. But I mean, I'd, I'd like a refresh because yeah, I, want see different, I want to yeah. see different football. I mean, it's objectively different failed ideas. This season, and that's it. Yeah. It it just seems like we're rewarding failure. That's what it yeah. is to me. Yeah. Um, I think I it it. I was thinking about it earlier. Um, uh, going back to that FA Cup game with Hampton, had we lost that, mate, I wonder if that might have been significant. 
There have been beat. several moments, haven't there, during this season where you think one more defeat after Halifax, after that Yeovil game when we played Halifax at home in that filthy, grubby day at Playmore, and you thought uh, another defeat here, and you know, and they pull out a win. And that you just, we, yeah, we, just we, we were never more there. than one or two games adrift, weren't we? So I think they mm. just kept on hoping he'll put it round, and and of course. There was a yeah, pain and talk about Leicester quickly. Uh, Brendan Rogers, who was success like Gary Johnson, and look how badly that ended up, and how where a new manager comes in and it might be too late, but how that stops momentum. Just because the manager has been successful, and you can miss me so many clubs everywhere around where just because the manager was successful doesn't mean he's always going to find success in the next couple of years. And when it starts to go wrong, doesn't mean he's going to get success back. Mm. Why did we wait so long? for mm. being back in regional bloody football. It's a disgrace. Yeah, we were saying, you know, our aspirations, we shouldn't be looking at being a bottom half National League club <laughs> just to be in the National League South in the relegation zone. It's it's a disgrace. It is yeah. such a disgrace. And I've said it before, you know, no club is too big to go down. And I accept that this season we deserve to go down based 100%. on the season we've had. But on the same front, you look at other smaller clubs in our division, who have done really well, and it's to me, Dorking. it's just well, Mark White Dorking has outdone Gary. But then Dawson they, and your boys have stayed up twenty years, right? And you, your uh, boys yeah, stayed just, up. Just, just like, how can you get overdone done by that? Like they've done amazingly, but how? Mm. And look at the teams we've beat recently. Shocking. They're most of them around the playoffs. As I said, if yeah. we've got act together, just made a half half decent, <laughs> you know, kind of team that's just got cohesion, like we have in the last eight, seven, eight games. Look at around the playoffs. So and of course, that, yeah. the comment, I was just thinking then, what, what you just said then, Dom, is right. We've never been more than one or two games away. What are we going to get relegated by? Mm. One yeah. game, half a game, mm. no games if it ends up on goal difference. We've never been that. Of course, we've had that massive 5-1, five, five game winning run to get up to where we are now. But what is it? Seven, 16 points in seven games? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, and we've not got it out. That's, I, just, you know, I just that's feel the whole club has lifted a but, bit of yeah. like, oh, it'll come good, it'll be fine. Gary, will get, it, Gary yeah. will get it right eventually because that's what he does. And that, like, yeah. We, we feel like they've, entirely, didn't they've, we? And he's, they've he's slept walked into relegation, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. But I will harbour back to that run of four home games where in the last 90th minute or the last five minutes, we we threw away points. Yeah. Yep. And have we kept, <laughs> have we kept you know, kept those goals out? We'd be out of the relegation zone. Yeah, going into the last game. Yeah, no, I do. Agree. Yeah, yeah. It's. <laughs> I think. So, I mean. Yeah. I think. I mean, any club can say that, can't they? Any club that goes up, yeah. any clubs that you know, if Arsenal don't win the Premier League, they're going to look at they're going to look at Wednesday night and think, oh, well, that's probably you know games like that, isn't it? But actually, you know, across an entire season, you know, you there's all everyone can point to games where they could have got points, where they conceded late goals, and and all and all of that. But I think the problem for us is there's just so many. You could look at that. I said about York away, that game is a game we should never lost. Dorking away mm. was an awful opportunity. It was a terrible opportunity, an unbelievable opportunity to get up above them, reinforce a win at the weekend, go again, and we just you turn up when you're just dreadful. You've got what you deserve. Yeah. Awful performance. It all goes back Games to like the that. squad building and, and everything to do yeah. with that. You can't start a squad so badly, and then it took months to get that right, didn't it? And you can't... Yeah. You're playing the like, odds there, aren't you? You're playing the odds that he'll get players in eventually he'll, and he'll get it right. But And he like he likes to harp on to that fact, doesn't he, Gary? How he's been saying, I finally got the squad that I, you know, if I had yeah. this squad at the beginning of the season, yeah, it was then we'd probably be all right. Earlier, wouldn't it? And, you know, and then uh, he was just you know what annoys me, right? Yeah, we haven't got Rexham's budget. Yeah, we might probably have a mid table budget. Start giving me that absolute, oh, we've had a relegation budget. No, we mm. haven't. We spent a fee on Hanson. You know, we clearly signed players that should have done a lot more. And it's not all Johnson's fault. It's on the players because a lot of them have been bloody disgraceful, a few of them. Um, and I just don't want them seeing, having that talking United. They don't deserve it. You know, they've come here probably. He can find. Them, come out. They've yeah, come he out. can find. Go on. No, sorry, Sam. I was going to say no. he can find. He, ha- he, he can find good players like Jarvis, for example. Yeah. But unfortunately. He's found five or six or more than that who have been not to not to national and they have standards, no not mentality. Even... They have no mentality. Yes. That's my biggest problem with a lot of these. You don't look at them and think, oh, these are trying, but they're just terrible. They just these are players on the way down. Yeah, yeah these these are players. The are just, yeah, just, just, what are they trouble. doing? They're never going to make professional footballers. Mm-hmm. They've let they've mm-hmm. lost that huge opportunity that they had. 
um, a lot of them. But and then you just get a bit of a Dawson come in, and then it just shows difference. But anyway, we'll all do more in part two. It's my longer part one. Uh, thanks for watching this one, and we'll see you in part two. Here's Hargreaves, chance for Torquay. Chris Hargreaves, the captain. If he stays on side, Carlisle checks instead. He's looking for Bennett. Sells.